Hello everybody and welcome to this very interesting video where we'll be running over some of the most hyped electrical vehicle stocks. We have today selected the following five. Tesla stock ticker TSLA, NIO stock ticker NIO, Candy Technologies stock ticker KNDI, Workhorse stock ticker WKHS, Arsimoto stock ticker FUV. So we thought today would be good to just give a bit more details on each of the company. Obviously we have Tesla first, it does not really need an additional introduction. Besides the fact that it's not only an electrical vehicle manufacturer, they are also very much focused in batteries, energy storage, autonomous driving, and they have a lot of interesting things going on for them at the moment. NIO was on the verge of bankruptcy earlier in the year, but was saved last minute by some investors or perhaps more the Chinese government. And since then, the stock has just exploded. It is also focusing on the premium electrical vehicle market similar to Tesla. So it's a direct competitor. We also have another Chinese company, Candy Technologies, which is also manufacturing their own vehicles, but also batteries. They are different from Tesla and NIO in the sense that they focus on a complete different market, which is people who only need cars for short trips less than 100 miles. And they are also providing the cheapest of the cheapest cars on the market. They have just expanded to the US where they have launched two new models less than $10,000 they cost. It's going to be very interesting to see if they can get a grip in this more niche market uh, or whether they will fail considerably. The cars, in my opinion, is not the prettiest, but they have a purpose, so they may become successful. Then we have Workhorse, which focus on selling trucks. So far, they have only sold, I think, around 400 trucks this year. So again, sales are really low, but they are in the competition for a huge, I think, $6 billion contract with UPS. And this can be a main trigger for this stock. And we're going to touch more upon this later in the video. Lastly, we have FUV, which is a niche player focus on producing three-wheeled electrical vehicles. They have one that is called Deliverator, which delivers goods and other stuff in local communities. And then they're trying to broaden out their kind of ATV uh, type product, which is called the Fun Vehicle. So we then obviously want to understand whether these companies is in an uptrend or downtrend. So if we look here in the most recent periods, we can see that all of them year to date have been on fire and a lot of them has piggybacked on the hype around Tesla, which year to date has gained 414%. NIO has gained an impressive 936%. Candy Technologies, 99%, Workhorse, impressive, 469%, and FUV, also impressive, 278%. However, it is worthwhile to note that while Tesla, NIO, and Candy are all in uptrend, if you look from a simple moving average perspective, Workhorse and FUV are in downtrend if you compare with simple moving average 20 days and 50 days. We then want to understand if these companies can deliver any profit in the end of the day. Obviously, this is electrical vehicles in its early phase of adoption, so we do not expect that for all of them. First, we think it's important to look at the revenue, though. We can see Tesla has 28 billion, so by far the biggest of all the five companies. NIO, 1.4 billion. Candy Technologies, 120 million. Workhorse has only 183,000. And FUV has 1,862,000, so quite a significant difference among the five companies. The lack of revenue for some of these companies will obviously be reflected in the net income. And as we can see here, Tesla was positive on 700 million, which was the first time ever, which was really important for the company. It's a big milestone. NIO was on the verge of bankruptcy and also lost 1.6 billion. Candy Technologies, a small, decent 7 million profit. With Candy Technologies, they have had really inconsistent results over the years. So this is by no means a clear indication that they will be profitable in the future. So you need to be wary about that. Workhorse, minus $137 million, so huge compared to the revenue, of course. They're investing a lot in research in their truck. 
and FUV similar minus 16 million also focusing a lot on um, research and development and they have not been as successful uh, in rolling out uh, their new fun vehicle due to the Rona situation. We can also take a look at the Beanish M score, which is a mathematical model that determines whether the company has manipulated its profits. So we want this to be below minus 2.22. Tesla green, that is good. NEO only 0.40. And what is really important to note on NEO is that their accounts are unaudited. Again, not saying that anything is wrong, but in China we had a similar case with uh, Lucky Coffin, which was growing like crazy and was going to compete with Starbucks. And in the end, it was discovered that all was fraud. Again, not saying this is the case for Neo, but just be mindful that their accounts are unaudited. Candy here has 2.03 minus, which is okay, it's not too bad. Workhorse 0 0.66, a red flag, and FUV 78.06, a really bit red flag for them, so please keep this in mind. We can also take a look at the Sloan ratio, which just shows if a substantial part of their earnings are non-cash accruals, we're not interested in that, so we want this to be between minus 10% to 10%. Tesla green, Neo almost green, looks okay. Candy green, Workhorse again minus 177, so a big red flag for them. And FUV looks all right here with minus 10%. Okay, let's do a quick recap on the stock trend. Tesla, Neo, and Candy is an uptrend. Workhorse and FUV is in a downtrend. On the net income part, Tesla and Candy is positive. Neo, Workhorse, and Asimoto are negative. On the net profit margin for the last 12 months, Candy is the best, followed by Tesla, and then Neo, FUV, and Workhorse was, of course, negative. We then want to understand how high returns and cash flow margins is being generated. And if we first take a look at the return on invested capital here, we can see the Tesla respectable 8%, minus 22 for Neo, 14% for Candy, really good. Workhorse minus 26, not too good. And the worst one, FUV with minus 98%. A similar story on the level three cash flow margin, 7% for Tesla, minus 109% for NEO, 2.5% for Candy, minus 23,389 for Workhorse, and minus 738 for FUV. So really poor numbers for those two, but it's no surprise considering the revenue we just looked at. We can also take a look at the balance sheet, which is again really important in this situation, as some of these companies are not earning a lot of money. So we want to understand how strong the financial position is and whether they can continue to sustain their losses. So we can first take a look at the current ratio. We want this to be above one and we can see Tesla, Neo, and Candy is doing really well here above one. Workhorse again, red flag, 0.33 and a really good number actually for FUE with almost five. On the cash ratio, Tesla doing fine above one, Neo, Candy and Workhorse doing very poorly. They don't have a lot of cash on their hand, which again is very important considering the cash burn that some of these companies are doing. So if we look at Neo, they cannot sustain a similar year next year with the cash that they have at the moment. Candy Technologies was obviously in profit, but they have had larger minus than minus 6 million in the past. So again, it's also a small red flag for them. Big red flag for Workhorse, which do not have enough money, most likely to continue uh, with the cash burn. And then last we have FUV, which actually looks quite okay here with 2.67. But again, they only have around seven and a, uh, and a half million dollars. And last year they have had a minus and 15 million. So still quite a red flag for them. Next, the total assets versus total liabilities. We want this to be above 1.5. Tesla green, Neo only 0 0.80, so a red flag. Candy really good here again with 2.77. Workhorse again a red flag, no surprise here, 0 0.44. And FUV actually doing quite okay here with 4.04. .04. A similar story on the debt equity where Tesla, Candy, and FUV are doing quite well, whereas Neo and Workhorse, there's red flags. We can also look at the Altman set score, which is a credit strength test that assesses the likelihood of bankruptcy. Want this to be above 1.8. Tests are really good. Neo actually also really good here, a little bit surprising. Candy also doing really good. Workhorse again, minus 1.43. 
bit red flag. And if you're really doing extremely well with 19.38. Piotrowski score is another way to assess the strength of the uh, financial situation. We want this to be equal above five. Tesla good, new only three. Candy six, so that's really good. Workhorse get the lowest with one. And if you really also red flag here, that only gets three. I would say for Neo, more specifically, even though there's quite a lot of concerns here, they are supported by the Chinese government. So again, I wouldn't be too concerned with their financials because I think once the Chinese government selects a winner, they will stick with it. So a bit similar situation as with Alibaba. So again, back on the recap, we first looked at the return on invested capital, Candy doing the best, followed by Tesla, NEO, Workhorse, and FUV. Levered free cash flow, almost same situation. Tesla doing the best, followed by Candy, NEO number three, and then Asimoto and Workhorse doing really poorly again. On the tattle ratio, FUV was doing really well, Candy the same, Tesla the same, and NEO was also doing quite fine, Workhorse doing the worst. Debt equity, Candy doing the best, followed by FUV, Tesla, and Workhorse, and Neo was not doing too well here again. We then usually want to understand how much value is returned to shareholders through dividend and or buyback, but for these companies it's quite different. They're growth companies, so none of them are paying any dividend, and they don't do buyback as well. They're actually often uh, issuing additional shares to raise equity, which is obviously good if they need that to support the growth that they're having, but it can also be a diluter of shareholder value. So again, it depends on the situation. Tesla minus 1.9%, no red flag here, that's quite okay. Same with NEO, Candy and Workhorse. However, with FUV, it's a bit of a concern here with minus 12.58%. We will expect that both perhaps NEO, Workhorse and FUV will have to raise more cash in the next year to support the growth, considering the loss that they have had. We then want to understand whether these companies are expected to grow in the future. And for these ones more specifically, rather than looking at the P ratio, we thought it would be good to look at the price to sales ratio, which is another valuation metric where you are comparing the share price in with the revenue. And we can see here Tesla 15.31. It's actually quite okay compared to most of the other companies, but it's still on the high side compared to other industries. Neo much higher with 40.74. Candy the lowest with 4.68, so that's quite okay. Obviously Workhorse, it's really poor here. It's 10,206. No surprise given the revenue that they're having and a similar situation with FUV here on 109. We can also take a look at the revenue growth for the last 12 months and we can see here Tesla respectively 39.16% looking quite good. Neo amazing 139.54%. So again, this is a big plus for them and one of the reasons why the share price has exploded in the recent months. Candy Technology is the first major big red flag we see for them. Their revenue went down with 19.5%. However, they have just launched two new cars in the US and it's going to be quite interesting to see if they can reverse this because that is needed if the share price is to go up again. Workhorse and FUV are obviously really big, but they come from so small, small values that it's quite irrelevant to look at as of today. Similar situation on the net profit growth for the last 12 months. Tesla, 80% almost a really good number. Neo again. 58%, which is really good compared to the loss they've had. So it shows that they're on the right path, perhaps in profitability. Candy, 107%. Again, as mentioned before, they have been quite unstable. So the year before they were having a loss, so they have improved a lot, but there's no guarantees that this will continue in the future. And with Workhorse and FUV, again, obviously, they are struggling a bit on the profitability side. So a short recap, we first looked at the price to sales ratio and what we see was that Candy was having the lowest followed by Tesla, NEO, FUV and Workhorse. On the revenue growth for the past one year, FUV had done the best followed by Workhorse. However, I would disregard these numbers as they came from such a small uh, number initially. 
and it's much more interesting to look at new at number three here which has done really well similar tesla was also doing quite okay the only red flag here was the first one for candy which had a revenue decrease in the past year on the net income growth on the other hand candy was doing really well the same with tesla neo is also on the right track whereas asimoto and workhorse is struggling again quite a bit Finally, we want to understand whether these companies are currently under or overvalued. So we can first look at the PEG ratio. However, as the P ratio is either negative or there's no EPS growth forecast, we cannot determine whether they are under or overvalued from this perspective. Next, we can look at my own estimated intrinsic value of these companies, which is a very challenging exercise, <laughs> to be honest. But based on that, what I see is that there's a downside on Tesla on 18.03%, downside on NEO on around 28%, Candy also a downside on 23%, Workhorse an upside on 23%, which is a bit surprising, and FUV an upside on 17%. So again, very challenging exercise and I would say there is quite a big margin of uncertainty with these ones. So again, I would use them cautiously. We can also take a look at the beta ratio, which is just the stock's volatility in relation to the overall market. And from what we have here, all of them, Tesla, Candy and Workhorse are extremely volatile compared to the general market. We can also look at some other value indicators. One of them is the book value per share. And based on that, all of them are overvalued. We can also look at the relative strength index for the last 14 days. We want this to be below 30 because it means that it's oversold and it may go in an uptrend. If it's above 70, it's considered an overbought territory and it may do a pullback. Tesla, it's fine in the middle. Neo and Candy are both in the overbought territory, so please note that. It's a no surprise for Neo considering how much the share price has increased over the last six months. And Workhorse and FUV are similar to Tesla in the middle. Finally, we can look at what the analyst is saying, and I'm by no means using them as a, a decision maker because they sometimes have their own agenda, but it's often interesting to understand if they have the same view as the numbers are telling us. So if we look at Tesla and the consensus price target, which is just the middle ground of all the estimates of the analyst, some will have higher, some will have lower, they believe there's a downside on Tesla on 43%. Neo, 54%. In Candy, there's no analyst that is following. I think maybe there came one recently, but there's no conclusive indication from the analyst. Workhorse is more or less fairly valued here at a small downside and a big upside, a bit surprising, on 42% on FUV. I would say for all these companies, or more specifically Tesla and NEO, a lot of the analysts has been wrong, especially around Tesla for a lot of time. They may not have fully understood the case of Tesla and have more seen them as an electrical vehicle manufacturer where they indeed are much more than that. They need to be much more because otherwise the, 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 the valuation of the company is simply too high. It is around more than $400 billion which you could combine so many of the uh, historic manufacturers like Volkswagen, Toyota, and they would not even be able to match that combined. So again, Tesla is a different monster as of today. Whether it's a fair price or not, that's a different discussion. So to sum up how we see the overall value assessment of these companies as of today, there is a lot of uncertainty around those numbers, but that is that Tesla, Neo and Candy are all overvalued, Workhorse and FUV are undervalued. But I would say specifically for these companies as their growth stocks and there's a lot of intangible um, factors that determines the price of those that they overvalue doesn't mean that they will not increase more going forward it may actually continue to increase while as the one that is considered undervalued may decrease so take it with a grain of salt 
All right, so usually we would select the top picks among these stocks. However, we thought it would be more interesting to run over each one of them and give our final consideration. So as we just mentioned, it is challenging to evaluate these growth stocks. However, for Tesla, it has strong fundamentals. It's probably the best among the five, has the best software, has the best cars. However, we are a bit concerned with the high price that Tesla comes with as of today, even with a 15% discount compared to its 52 week high. We have a feeling that there's so much value, uh, future value built into the Tesla stock that if they do not deliver on some of these aspects, it will come down quite a bit. However, we don't want to bet against Tesla, but we will only buy them if there comes a decent dip in the share price. With NEO, it's more or less a similar story. It has high growth projections. However, we feel that it has gone up too fast and what is usually going up fast also goes down fast. That being said, NEO is only a tenth of the value of Tesla just to show the magnitude of difference between the two companies. And again, we think that in the long term, NEO will be a good investment. However, we are not sure whether it will be a good time to jump in now as the share price have climbed so much over the last six months. Again, we may be wrong and this may continue further up, but this is how we feel as of today. And therefore, we will only initiate a position if there comes a decent dip in the share price. Next, we have the candy, unstable results. There's a big upside if the new cars are successful in the US. However, to be honest, if you go and check the pictures of those cars, they are really not that pretty. And Candy had a launch event, online event, where there was big expectation, but it flopped massively. And there was not a lot of people who signed up uh, as free rides to buy the car in the future, even though the cost for such would be reimbursed and it was extremely low. So it's an indication of that they, it may be challenging for them to get a foothold in the US, but we would say if they do so, they will look really attractive and you could expect high returns on this stock if that happens, but it is a speculative play. And then we have workhorse no revenue but they have a huge potential if they are awarded the ups contract on six billion dollars so again it's a speculative play what we would say although we do not like the numbers of workhorse as of today which is obviously the the, the case when they're not selling any trucks it is still that we think there may be a good idea to buy the stock today. It has fallen quite a bit and it's like 40 or 50 percent away from its 52 week high. And once there comes a closer decision or closer time to the decision of UPS, we have a feeling that there may be anticipation that they will be awarded the contract and therefore the price will go up. So we actually think it's going to be a quite good investment, but it should only be for short term and you should really be uh, constantly checking on news about the UPS deal. If they get it still, it's going to be a huge game changer for this company. Last, we have FUV Asimoto. Again, no revenue, but they have a big potential if the vehicles that they are trying to sell the three-wheel vehicle become successful. Again, there could be serious upside on this stock and they could have a lot of growth. So again, it's a speculative play. There's no guarantees that they will become successful. There has been other companies trying to promote three-wheel vehicles in the past without too much success. So it's going to be interesting to see if they will fall in the same trap. So again, Take it as a speculative play. Don't put too much money into it, but you may, you may get really, really good returns if they are starting to sell the Deliverator or the fun vehicle. This was all we had for today. We really hope you enjoyed this video. Please note that we are not professional financial advisors and this is only done for entertainment purposes. If you like the video, please subscribe for future content. Put a like as well, that would really help a lot for the algorithm and provide a comment down in the comment section. Besides that, we just want to wish you a good day. Stay safe. See you next time.